All right, so this is going to be another video about derivatives using limits. So this time our function is going to be the absolute value of x, and an interesting ha thing happens when we look at the absolute value, so hopefully you'll uh, see that by the end of this video. Okay, so I already set up the, uh, the limit definition of a derivative here, and then I have it where it's differentiating the uh, absolute value of x right here. Um, next, I'm going to put the f of x plus h. I'm going to actually write them below here to kind of keep myself a little bit more organized. So, uh, and then I'm going to substitute them after that. So we have f of x plus h is going to be equal to, for this function up here, be the absolute value of x plus h. Okay, then f of x, this value right here, would just be the absolute value of x from right here. Okay, next I'm going to take these two values and substitute them in to our limit definition over here. So we're going to have the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h, which is the absolute value of x plus h, minus the absolute value of x all over h. Now there's not much that we can do here. If you try to uh, do direct substitution with this zero right here in for h, you'd end up with a zero up top and a zero on the bottom, so we have a zero over zero. So that kind of gives us the hint that we can use some other technique to kind of, uh, to, to make it so we can use direct substitution. And that technique is rationali the rationalizing technique. So that's what I'm going to do. In this case, um, it's not actually irrational, but we can still use that technique with absolute values, and I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to still multiply by the conjugate here, which ends up up being x plus the absolute value of x plus h now instead of minus the square root of x or I'm sorry minus the absolute value of x now it's going to be plus the absolute value of x okay I'm going to do the same thing for the denominator okay now we have this conjugate up top I'm going to simplify by multiplying across and you end up having the absolute value of x plus h times the absolute value of x plus h. So that's just the absolute value of x plus h squared. Now since it's squared, it's already going to be positive. So you actually don't need the absolute value anymore. So I'm just going to get rid of them completely because it's redundant. And I'm just going to have x plus h quantity squared. Okay, we don't need to worry about the middle terms because again, they're going to cancel out with the conjugate. So let's worry about those last two terms right here with the uh, absolute value of x and the absolute value of x over here. Now, the absolute value of x times the absolute value of x would be x squared or the absolute value of x squared, I should say. But again, since it's x squared, it's already going to be positive. You do not need the absolute value bars anymore. So now I'm just going to say minus x squared. Okay, all of this is going to be over h right here times this denominator over here. So the absolute value of x plus h plus the absolute value of x. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this top part right here by expanding it out. So you're going to end up with the limit as h goes to zero uh, and then you're going to have x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus x squared all over h times the quantity of the absolute value of x plus h plus the absolute value of x, like so. Okay, and there's some things up top that will simplify out. So we have the x squared minus the x squared. Okay, if you notice, I can also factor out an h from this top part right here and divide out this h right here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I'm going to get rid of this h, this h, and this h. So I divided the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by h. And now what you notice is that we're not dividing by zero anymore. Now we can actually use direct substitution for the zero because we're not, because this function right here is completely continuous. So that's what I'm going to do now. So then this ends up being zero. So I'm just going to put an entire line through that h because that's gone. This right here would also be zero. After we cancel everything out, what we're left with up top is the 2x. So I'm going to put 2x here. And on the bottom, it's the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of x, which ends up being 2 times the absolute value of x. Now this 2 over 2 will cancel out to be 1 over 1, and now we're left with an interesting uh, function here where it's x divided by the absolute value of x. Now an interesting thing happens with this result here. If we took an x that was greater than 0, that means this x and this x would both be positive and they'd be the same value, so they would cancel each other out, and you'd end up with the derivative being equal to 1. Okay. Now if the x was less than 0 instead of greater than 0, this is where the interesting thing happens. You'd be left with a negative up top because it's less than 0 and a positive on the bottom, and that would end up being negative 1. 
Okay. Now this is a problem. We have one derivative being equal to 1 and the other one being equal to negative 1. Now since they don't actually agree on both sides of this 0, so if you notice we're going to 0 here, it's got, if you remember, the limit has to agree on both sides. In this case, it's not agreeing because it's 1 on one side and negative 1 on the other. And since they don't agree, they're not going, they're not converging toward a certain value, this ends up being non-differentiable or it does not have a derivative. So the answer would not be this or this. The answer would be the, the derivative does not exist. Or you can just say it's not differentiable. Okay, so that's the absolute value um, derivative right here. We use the limit process to find the derivative of the absolute value of x, and as you can see, they, both of the derivatives do not match, so because of that, there is no derivative, so it's non-differentiable. So if you have any questions about this, let me know.